Let's talk about winding a coil for a crystal radio. Now, I've already got the base produced, and you can see it's got the tower on it. It's the newest version. Uh, it's got these two pillow blocks, and what I need to do now is to put the coil on it. And the coil is probably the most, well, it's probably the most important part, arguably. Uh, and uh, let's zoom in here a little bit and see what I've already done on it and uh, kind of go from there. You can see that I've already drilled holes here and here, and those are for mounting into the pillow blocks down there. Uh, and I've also put in these holes right here and here. So I drew a line across here, just stuck it in some angle iron and drew a line across there. And I've drilled holes here, 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 and here. And how I knew where to drill those is the fact that I've got a two inch form, that's the pipe, and it's uh, going to need 160 turns of 19 gauge wire. So I looked that up, I've got a video on that. And uh, so I determined that. And then from the size of the 19 gauge wire, I know that it's going to be 17.5 centimeters long. So that's the inside holes right there. So you say, okay, why did I drill the outside holes? Well, when I wrap this, I'm going to start by putting the wire in here, in this hole. Then I'm going to wrap across here. It's going to go down this hole. But when I go to mount it into the base, I need the wire back outside the form. So this is the, the inside holes are the uh, going in and the outside holes are going out. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now the uh, trick is to go actually start winding the coil and get that part done. Today I'm going to use this mandrel, but you don't have to use one. I'll show you the steps that you would do otherwise if you don't have one of these. So the first thing is if you're going to do this by hand, you're going to take your wire and you're going to put it in your star hole like this. And you're going to give yourself a lot of, a lot of extra wire. Uh, six inches to 12 inches is good foot. And you're going to bend it off inside there like this really sharply so that if you tug on this, it's uh, not going to pull out of there like that. You want it in there and then I will typically fold up the rest of it inside here so that you can give it a pretty good tug on here and it will stay in place as you wind. So if you're going to be doing it by hand, all you're going to do is you're going to continue this process, what I'm doing right now, and just roll it on around there and that will be it until you get all the way down to here. So uh, now I'm going to load up the mandrel and then I'm going to wind this whole thing. And again, the process is going to be the same. I'm going to use glue to make sure that the coil stays in place and stays tight for the life of the radio. And yeah, it's uh, messy, it's nasty, but it really helps in the long run. Okay, so let me get to it. So here we are. I've got my wire in the hole pinched. And with the mandrel, I have to have a wire on the outside, but it will hold in there very firmly. The rubber bands are here in case I need to stop and I can roll those over and hold the wire in place. I'm going to use glue. It's a very messy process. I got a wet rag sitting here off to the side and I'm going to apply some glue, smear it around and just start doing this. Um, the glue makes it uh, adhere much better over time. Now the first layers are kind of key and I need to get them to line up nicely. And beauty counts. Straight lines count. All this stuff counts. And since I'm using glue, I need to keep moving rather quickly because this stuff does set up. Okay, that's relatively straight. Yeah, this mandrel really helps because when you try to do this by hand, there's always the danger of, of accidentally releasing it and it just going all over the place. The wire will just go nuts and, and make a real mess. Come on, glue. Now on this one, I've got 160 turns, so I'm going to have to focus, and I forgot to start counting. One, two, Gotta keep the coils together. Gotta keep the windings together. One benefit of heavier wire is you can pull pretty soundly on it and not have to worry about it breaking. And I'm pulling it this direction against the other wire, just a little bit, just a little bit off of that um, to help hold it. And what else should I tell you? 
Um, yeah, that was a little too much pulling. Um, you, yeah, I, I'm going to repeat neatness counts, uh, beauty counts. If you have wire that's kinked or bent, um, it pays to stop and straighten it. And yeah, that can be very time consuming, which is why you want to start out with wire that's relatively straight. Yeah, this, this winding mandrel really helps. I mean, without it, your hands are toast in a very short order. When you're using glue, you have to keep moving or the glue will start to dry and ball up on you like it is out here. And if that gets underneath the wires, yeah, that becomes a headache. So I may have to stop and wipe this down. Get the glue balls off of there. You may say, how many times have you turned this so far? And the answer is, I'm not really counting because I measured very carefully where this exit hole is. And when I reach that exit hole, I've got my 160 turns, plus or minus two turns. And that will be well within the uh, accuracy of our, of our coil. As long as I keep the turns tight. If I start wandering all over the place, well, that changes the rules of the game. Notice I'm not having to fight with my wire source, my, my uh, spool of wire down there, which really takes a lot of pressure off of you. When that thing starts rolling around across the floor and kinking and all that stuff, that makes for a really bad day. Okay, I'm going to stop and get this wipe out here because it's just balling up on me. I got too much glue early on. Yep. Glue balls go away. So lesson learned, less glue, keep it closer to the to the winding. When I'm done, I will go back and wipe the glue off the outside here before it's had time to totally dry. Because the important part is just the, between the, the glue between the blue pipe and the wire. On the outside of the wire, we're going to strip some of the enamel off and all that, and it's just easier to do that if there's not a bunch of glue on the outside of it already. Now you say, is this worth it? Well, you know, I've had a lot of people who write me and say, you know, my dad and I built one of these. I'd like to build one with my son or my daughter or whatever. And yeah, I mean, if you want it to last, this, this coil will last 50 years. I mean, it's a generational thing. It's something you can pass along if you wish. And so taking the extra step and doing it extra well is, it can be well worthwhile. The wire I'm using today is not new wire. It's re-spooled off of a bigger wire, so it's not perfectly straight. If you can get wire that's like brand new on the spool, uh, and you can just kind of guide it on there without using a lot of force, uh, you can get really beautiful windings without doing a lot of the poking that I'm doing right now. 
Whoops, 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 whoops. I'm not paying attention. There we go. Get that back in there. Oh, hands are getting a little shaky. Not quite halfway there. Yeah, this is kind of rough on the hands. Putting a lot of stress on fingers and joints. One drawback of using heavier wire is that you have to use more force. And so I'm putting, putting some pretty hefty pressure on this wire, pulling on it very significantly to take out the waviness in the wire because again, it's not new wire, it's been re-spooled. And so the wire is not perfectly straight. So I'm running it through my thumb and forefinger. You can kind of see what it's doing to my hand and my thumb right there. Um, yeah, so in order to make it straight and lay down, and of course, a thinner wire requires a whole lot less pressure. So this is 19 gauge. And if you went with like a 22 gauge, it would make quite a difference. It'll also change the number of turns. I got a video on that, on how to, uh, on how to uh, calculate the number of turns given certain parameters. And yeah, that'll make life easier. But yeah, I've, uh, I kind of like to use this 19 gauge. I've grown accustomed to it. And I'm gonna get some of the glue balls off my fingers so I don't contaminate things any more than necessary. But yeah, heavier wire has its pluses and minuses. It certainly lasts longer on the radio because I mean these wires do wear over time when you run the when you run the tuner arm back and forth across them. It does uh, it does wear down on the on the copper copper softer than the stainless steel or the brass rod you're using and it wears but with you know with care and moderate use again 50 years uh, from one of these radios is not to be you know it wouldn't be a surprise at all to me there's my halfway mark right there you definitely don't want to run out of wire when you're doing this so you want to uh, make sure you have enough <laughs> I think when I bought this pool of wire. I bought uh, one kilometer of wire, a thousand meters of wire. And yeah, I know I do everything in metric, almost everything in metric. I just find it so much easier than trying to remember all the little fractions. I had to learn them as a kid, but in sixth grade, I was promised that the U.S. was going to the metric system and we had to go and we had to learn all the metric stuff. And then it did not happen. I'm not pulling straight on this, which is why I'm getting these gaps. I need to change my grip. Definitely want to be consistent because, like I said, changing my grip has changed the, the way the wire is laying down and creates opportunities for gaps between the between the uh, turns and as you can see that really slows down process the progress okay hold firm I was hoping to get two of these done today and it's gonna be one of those well <laughs> maybe maybe not type things it may be a fantasy People have asked in my past videos, how do you get such beautiful coils? And now you see the answer. It is nothing but patience. Patience and watching every turn go down. Um, you can motorize this process, but I don't think you can get the same, the same level of craftsmanship. There we go. There's a good word. Whoops. Yeah, I almost craftsman that good. Okay, we're past the halfway point. I know I keep bumping the camera, but it's basically looking right over my shoulder. And 
the camera, me, my hands, my feet, and the coil are all sharing this very small little space to give you the best view possible. I thought about getting an action cam, but frankly, I still have to put all the lights and everything in the space. Otherwise, it doesn't do any good. Well, I'm getting careless. Let me move the box over. Oh, there we go. Bang the camera again. Now, for those of you who have done this, or have attempted to do this, um, you can leave in the comments below your experiences. Oh, hands are cramping. Come on, hands, you gotta make it. Another 15 minutes, and we're golden. Yep. Yep, yep, getting tired. And one makes mistakes when one's tired. Nothing more beautiful, though, than a well-wound coil. Maybe I will look into a motorized winder. There are so many designs I would like to try. But every time I wind a coil, it's like, wow, I remember why I haven't done this for a while. It is work. slipping on me. Yep. Oh yeah, hands on the quadrate. I think next time I'm going to draft my son to help me. He, he loves he loves to get dragged into my projects like this. It's like after the first one, he's like, nope, it's, it's not interesting anymore. Whoops, starting to get glue balls. Don't want that. Because the glue ball under the wire is not beautiful. Okay, that will help. A little bit of fresh glue won't hurt. The glue I'm using is just plain old white glue. Nope, getting off, getting off. Boy, Boy that whole last turn was not, was not on track. And it does not hurt to have the wire that's feeding in pretty close to straight on with this because as you go across here and as the wire comes off of here the wire is going to the bottom down here is going to go back and forth like this and it changes how it lays on here so if it's off this way just a little bit onto the other coils that's good but you don't want it too far off because then it starts trying to ride up on the other coils or it starts going off in its own direction it'll go too far off that way
fighting with a cold right now, so my voice is strange and breathing is a challenge, but you don't want this to be too easy. Yeah, I'm glad I've got this mandrel today because if I was trying to do this by hand, I don't think my hands would have made it and I probably would have dropped the thing somewhere along the way and ended up having to re-spool half of it, which is not a good time. When you have a bunch of glued up wire and it's all just all tangled, it's like hopeless. Whoops, oops, focus. Debris on my fingers because of the glue. Yeah, I think I'll survive this first one today. But I don't think there's going to be another one. You notice I never turn loose of this coil with both hands. I've always got one on it because. Wow. Cramp city. Ow, ow, ow. I'm using my fingernail to press these back together because a couple of the last tracks I have gaps in them. Like right there, I had one, it just closed. There we go. No, oh, as soon as I say that. Okay. A little more glue. This might just carry us to the end. As I've said in some of my other videos, this process is not what you would call hard. It is all about focus and desire. You gotta really want it. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now, why are you pulling the wrong way on me? Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely grab the sun next time. So one benefit of having tension, you can see that I don't have to manually hold tension all the time. When it's going nicely, I can just let the wire uh, tension itself. And here's a nice straight smooth stretch. So I can kind of just let it do its own thing. And I just keep turning it, making sure it's laying down next to the other one, next to the last one, until I hit a, until I hit a uh, section of wire that is no longer straight. Lost the camera battery without warning, so maybe that's a good thing because I can show you why. I got these rubber bands here. If I can get it off of there now, because I can pull one over there and kind of stop what I'm doing for a little bit. And other than the glue drying out on me, it's not a disaster. I don't know how much of the last part of the video I lost. Probably about six minutes. Oops, oops, oops. Um, don't get lazy. Yeah. There we go. So close. Right there. That's our target. Wow. So per the camera, so far, when it quit, we had 39 minutes into it, which is not too terrible. Anything under an hour is, I consider, pretty good timing. Okay, here we are. Now I'm going to wind a little bit past this hole just to make sure that we, we get there. And then I am going to tape it off very thoroughly. Let it dry a bit. And then I will do the cleaning up. You see I'm over the top of the hole. I usually like to go a turn or two past the end hole to make sure that I have actually reached it because sometimes there's an optical illusion 
and you say, oh, I'm going to cut that off. And then you realize that, oops, I'm a turn or two short of actually being where I want to be. Okay. I'm going to apply. Whoa, no, 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 you don't. Maybe I'm just going to go directly for the tape. I want to turn loose of this, keeping tension on it, bumping the camera. Yeah, don't you love when you can't find the end of the tape? Yeah. So I'm securing this so that when I, as I take it off the mandrel, it doesn't just all come apart on me. Okay, there we go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off of here, clean it up, and uh, actually I'll show you that, but uh, take it off of here and then uh, poke this end into the exit hole I showed you earlier and we'll finish out that. Okay, so let me do that. Let's see how much of this we end up keeping. Yeah, just to make this easier, I'm going to cut this off, but I'm going to give myself, you know, what, 30 centimeters, almost a foot, because it ain't worth it to cut it off like an inch short, and then you're like, uh-oh. Um, and then I am going to make sure this wire doesn't come all unspooled, because keeping it nice and neat is a, is a bonus next time you go to do this. Okay, that is locked off. This is locked off. So I have taken you through the entire process. There is no magic. It is just significant effort, uh, focus, and subjecting your hands to eh, a little bit of cramping, and, but it's not too terrible. Oh yeah, look at that. So there we have it. Not too bad, it needs a wipe down. Um, I need to, so right now the wire here is on the inside of the coil, but as we build our radio, we need it on the outside. So that's why we have two holes here. We have one going in and then we'll have another one coming out. Let's see if I can keep this on camera and do that. There we go. And you don't really want to kink that wire. Like I almost did. I'm going to keep it very tight. You see what I'm doing? There's just that loop right there. And it won't hurt to have the pliers assisting. There we go. Pull. Ah, I see this is what I didn't want to do. I didn't want to undo the other. Pull it back. Hold firm. Pull. And that's another good thing about, about heavier wire is you can abuse it a little bit and get away with it. And I gotta fix this. Okay. Yeah, not too terrible, but I wish I hadn't pulled it away like that. Okay, so that's one end. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna untape this, and I'm not gonna try to do it on camera because I'm afraid uh, I'm gonna drop it or something. My hands are just not stable right now. I'm gonna do the same thing I did here, and then we'll go clean it up and, and we'll have a look at uh, the final result. Okay, got both ends as they should be. You notice got a lot too much wire here, but that's okay. Better a lot too much than just an inch too little, because then you will be sad. Um, shaping up not too badly. So as the glue dries, that whiteness you're seeing will go away. Um, I gotta be careful not to knock my coils out of alignment, but. I got that in a little tighter, but yeah, okay. Overall, I give myself a A minus on it. It's uh, it's going to work well, and it's uh, going to look good. Well, here's our 
coil we just got finished winding and the base that we had early on and we're going to end up mounting it in here like this so this is uh, kind of what it'll look like we'll finish out the rest of it these wires will be inside here and they'll we'll uh, add some components here our wiper arm here and so forth so yeah not too bad uh, let's zoom in a little bit take a look uh, close up at the coil yeah it's uh, pretty consistent I'm gonna end up adding some glue to the ends because they're not as they're not as glued down as I'd like uh, and over time as the wiper arm goes back and forth across the ends it will loosen these up so adding a little bit of extra white glue along the ends will uh, will help ensure that doesn't happen but if we look at the uh, consistency of the turns across here I'm really happy with that so that mandrel really helped yeah uh, so it's gonna it's going to perform well okay well that's pretty much it that's what it takes to uh, wind a crystal radial coil or if you're doing other types of experimentation those kind of coils as well hope you found that useful and interesting in your DIY electronic experimentation